Um, but now we're going to switch over to the other big thing that happened on Disney Plus this week because Moon Knight uh, brought its season one to a conclusion. And we haven't discussed any Moon Knight the last couple of weeks. So just, let's just kind of briefly go through episodes four, five, and six. So, Brent, why don't you start us off? I know you were very, very into episode four. So talk to me about episode four and where you've kind of ended up here through the last three episodes. Yeah, so I'll start at episode four. I loved episode four. It was like an Indiana Jones, like Tomb Raider kind of uh, kind of episode. Um, very, very fun. Had that like, you know, high adventure uh, as they went through the tombs. They discovered uh, Alexander the Great's tomb. They were kind of, uh, you know, uh, Mark Spector had to kind of give over uh, the uh, control uh, to um, Stephen Grant because he's the one that has all the brains and is like smart with all that with all like the you know Egyptian yeah. history and stuff. So I thought that was a really really fun episode. I enjoyed it a lot. Um, then uh, we ended up uh, in in a crazy situation uh, with you know again this is spoilers. We're talking about everything. Uh, Mark gets shot and and seemingly killed. At the end of episode four, which leads us into an excellent episode five, uh, where we actually learn the truth of the split identity uh, uh, between Mark Spector and Stephen Grant. And we basically find out that, that was heavy, Doc. Yeah, it was yeah. actually heavy. And again, Oscar Isaac carrying every, you know, carrying the whole show, obviously, yeah. <laughs> on his back. He did a really good job. And I was like, surprised, like, how uh, poignant it got and how emotional it got. Um, we find out that basically when Mark was younger, he had a younger brother. Uh, they went into like explore a cave that, you know, in by their home, I guess, that they weren't supposed to. And then there was like a rain, a rain came, it flooded and his uh, brother died. And uh, his mother, as a result, became like an abusive alcoholic and um, blamed know, him. Like, and... Yeah, blamed him. And it was like a recluse and verbally, physically, mentally abusive. And then uh, basically Stephen Grant was this character um, that him and his brother loved from like a, a, a VHS, like some movie that they Tomb used to watch. Busting or something Tomb like that. Tomb Busters. Yeah. I think it was Tomb Busters. Tomb Busters. Or something, something like that. So yeah, and then uh, that was basically a character they loved and the identity disorder uh, kind of uh, manifested itself and took over that British persona with that like, you know, phony kind of accent, which makes sense now why his British yeah. accent was kind of weird because like it was like a kid. He's not British. Doing yeah. one, he's not British. So, um, yeah, I thought, I thought that was really interesting. Um, and then we got into episode six, the series finale. Well, I should say there was a lot more in episode five. We also got introduced very importantly that, uh, the MCU acknowledged that there is an afterlife. So it gives a little credence to black Panther when he has that little afterlife sequence, uh, that we all thought was maybe like a yep. hallucination, a hallucin ugh, a hallucination, from, I had a couple of margaritas today too. Um, <laughs> true story. Um, a hallucination from the the little purple plant. But now they've kind of acknowledged that there are afterlifes and many different afterlifes in the MCU. Yeah. So that was kind of a big reveal. Um, so on top of the multiverses of madness, we now have all these afterlives. And they've also basically acknowledged, I mean, at this point, they've already acknowledged that there are Egyptian gods, but there's a lot of them. <laughs> and they, they, are, <laughs> they are very present and they're influencing things. And uh, we had a little ride on the Duat, um, which is like the uh, river of the afterlife, like Sand River, and um, had a really cool sequence there where we, we lost Steven. Um, and then we get to episode six, where they had to kind of reconcile um, the two personalities and coexist with each other. And, uh, you know, then we finally got uh, Kanchu back. And uh, I mean, I, I that, for me, I'm just going to get into it now. Episode yeah, six it. felt very flat for me. Um, yeah. I thought the whole villain arc at the end just kind of like fell flat with Ethan Hawke. Again, you got a great actor and then like, I don't know what you did with it. Then there was a big giant alligator woman and <laughs> that was like the big boss was a big alligator woman. <laughs> and <laughs> it's like that this guy's this is a real story it happened all right so there's a big alligator woman and it turned into a big cgi crap fest at the end and you know i i have a i have a couple of bones to pick so first off you had six episodes we knew this series was going to be six episodes only i loved episode four and five which i should mention featured no moon night at no all there was no superhero costume night. no moon yeah. night at all okay there was some action there was some stuff but no Moon Knight. A lot of character development, which is great, but no Moon Knight. Um, so we only had Moon Knight really for like 
a second in the first episode, a brief fight in the second episode, and a brief fight in the third episode. Then for episodes four and five, you had no Moon Knight. And then this, the final, the finale, we had, I don't know, again, a brief fight at the end with Moon Knight. And that was it. Also, I don't know if you remember, Kevin, uh, what is it, Fe- Feige? Feige. Feige. I, I blanked out on it. Kevin Feige was like, we certainly don't pull any punches. We don't hold anything back. Moon Knight's super violent. Show was not that violent. <laughs> there were a couple not. of scenes where, like, I saw some blood. And, you know, people were getting, like, boomerangs in their chest and stuff. But, yeah. like, it was really not that violent. Like, he made it sound like it was going to be Daredevil. And mm-hmm. it was nowhere close to that. So, I thought that was, like, a little disingenuous. Not that not that I was, like, craving bloodshed. Yeah. But, like, yeah. just the comments maybe led me to believe there was not a lot of action in some of the episodes. So, I thought yeah. that was that was misleading. Um, and, yeah, again, that, that, final, that final confrontation felt very rushed. Uh, because they had to spend like three quarters of the episode kind of resolving all the stuff from episode five. And then you just got this. Uh, so you the think the it villain... could have used another episode or two? Yeah, like if you were going to do episodes four and five, it should have been at least like eight episodes. So we had like three yeah. episodes to get back. Um, so I know. Sorry if I'm a little all over the place. Like, No, no, no. Listen, you're going through the I know I'm rambling. Of I'm going through the roller coaster. So. Six. Yeah, I was definitely higher on the series. Um, the first couple episodes, I was higher than you on the first episode. Yeah. I think the second and third, we felt the same way. I loved episode four and five, but then six really fell flat for me. Um, you know, the coolest thing was maybe like the post credit sequence, but we could talk yeah. about that in a moment. So, like, yeah. how how was four, five, and six for you? Do you, are you on the same yeah. page as me? Well, Were you as offended as I was? <laughs> <laughs> I got to tell you. You know, I was very skeptical after the first one. I was not really sold and I was going to watch it basically by obligation just because, hey, it's the big thing happening in geekdom. I'm going to watch Moon Knight so we can talk about it on the show. Uh, Two and three definitely started to work their magic on me. Mm -hmm. And somewhere in four, I finally got fully immersed and bought into this world. I think it was the Egyptian setting. Yeah. I think it was finally finding out more about the, the main characters and their relationship and the stuff with him and Layla and you know more about Khonshu and his relationship to the other Egyptian gods and, and how all these different avatars for all the different gods work and all that. Um, so for me, like, the the general note is i love how unpredictable this show was i you know a lot of the marvel stuff i can see a, a mile away a lot of you know i just to me a lot of it is just kind of predictable i see where things are going to end up oh there that there's going to be a swerve there this guy's going to be the villain like yeah i'm used to being able to kind of see what we're what we're building towards for me in moon knight I was, I never had any real clue what the hell was going to happen next. Sure. You know, I feel like it was shot that way. It was directed that way. It was edited that way. There is a lot of stuff where you're just meant to go, what the hell is going on? There's a talking hippopotamus talking to me right now out of <laughs> nowhere, apropos of nothing. You know, like there's a lot of this, like, what, where did that come from? Yeah. So for me, four, five, and six, I loved it because to me, I couldn't see any of it coming. I found it very um, just unpredictable and original and different than anything I'd seen before in this space. I've never seen a superhero story done this way. I've never seen any story really done this way. It's a very trippy, interesting sort of concept for a hero too. this idea of the human avatar of an ancient Egyptian god and all that sort of stuff. And then once, you know, once we get into four and there's the, the stuff where like Kanshu is, is, is reverting the night sky into the same star pattern that it had been thousands yeah. of years prior to f- try to find a tomb. Like I was, I, I loved it. I thought like th- yeah. I, this is so different. This is so cool. I am so into this. Uh, same thing. Episode five going into the afterlife stuff. What was interesting about that one was I was actually like because of the the arc of that episode and how heavy it was and what we learned about Stephen, 
and combined with the fact that I don't really know anything about Moon Knight aside from this show. Right. <laughs> um, when Steven died at the end, I thought that was like on purpose. I thought, oh, that's the point here. You know, he's in the afterlife. Right. He needs to make peace with himself. He needs to forgive himself. He needs to really come face to face with the harsh truths of his life. And that's why the hearts weren't balanced. That's what needed to happen. So in my mind, it was like, oh, the, the way he gets back to his real life now and is able to be a more complete hero is now the Stephen Grant alter ego is just gone now. And yeah, that's sad. That's bittersweet. But now it's like deep down, you know, Stephen's role has been served. You know, the the way he was there to protect Mark from the harsh sure. times. So in a way it was sad, but it was kind of beautiful and it was kind of poignant. And I was totally fine with now we just follow Mark from here on. So imagine my surprise at the beginning of six when he goes and brings him back to life. I'm like, oh, no. Right. So we're still doing the multiple personality thing. Okay. Right. Um, but see, for me, believe it or not, six didn't flatline for me. I, I I was by that point now, I was going for the ride, and I got into the fact that we're fighting a giant alligator lady, and that Layla now has this badass Egyptian superhero outfit. Right. Uh like I was just I was with it. I was just then at, by that point, I was just going for the ride and just wondering what the hell's gonna happen next. Cause like I said, by this point, they had me so off balanced as a right. viewer that I'm just like, I'm with you, I'm going for this ride, let's do this. And I'm still trying to figure out if Ethan Hawke's character is like, is the psychologist just a manipulation? Or is it possible the psychologist has his own double personality and that's why he looks at his foot after walking and he's got the bloody footsteps and he's mm. like, where'd that blood come from? And Steven's like, it looks like you don't know about uh, as much about this stuff as uh, you thought you did. Right. Like, I don't know. I was just, I was so hooked into the central mysteries of this world that yeah, it got a little crazy. But I liked it. I thought it was cool. Where yeah. like in the background by the pyramids, you see giant Amit and giant Kanchu fighting like like Power Ranger Megazord style. And then on the <laughs> ground, you have Moon Knight and 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 uh Layla. I don't even know if they have they given her a name yet. I don't know if they've given her an alias. No, but we see either. them fighting all the people on the ground, and I don't know. I was I was yeah. not disappointed. I was not disappointed. Like the, I uh, you ahead. you said some really good things like like the the show succeeded on I mean Oscar Isaac's performance yes and I do agree with like like you, I always talk about this like I love all the weird stuff and yeah. I I didn't really know where the show was going yeah. so that was exciting for me but like I just felt like and I and I appreciated that they they were not afraid I guess to take the time to like really mm -hmm. like do some more emotional stuff and some, and like dig a little deeper into the characters yeah. but I just felt like it needed a little more uh, runway before it I took gotcha. off, you know, yeah. like that, that kind of, and I, yeah, it just, the, the I, mean, I will say, yeah, I will say room. kind of echoing you there. I mean, it didn't bum me out, but I was surprised that that was it. Like when I realized like, Oh yeah. wow, this they're wrapping up the story here. And now the next thing is season two, presumably a year from now. So I'm like, Oh wow, it's all over. Like, I don't think I realized it was just six episodes until I was in the, so the six episode was wrapping up and I'm like, this feels an awful right. lot like a finale. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, so I definitely like, I, I agree that like it might, it ended a little abruptly. It probably could have used an episode seven or eight. Yeah. But with that said, I was there for the ride. And like, if, if, if the first episode for me, I think I said was like a four out of 10 by the end, the overall experience of Moon Knight for me, I'd say was a seven out of 10. I, I didn't like yeah. absolutely love it. But it was definitely a thumbs up experience for me. Yeah, I think overall I'd still probably fall in like a seven out of ten range. Like you know, I think I gave episode one like a seven out of ten. I think yeah. two and three were like like, like sevens for me. Four and five actually might have been like eights, but then I feel like the finale for me was like a six. So I got you. The got law you. of averages says it's a seven. I don't yeah. Know. Um, but we should talk about the the post credit sequence really quick. Yeah. Um, so there is a post credit sequence. Yes. Um, if you didn't stay to watch through the credits, and um, we got uh, well, first of all, yeah, Harrow, uh, which is played by Ethan Hawke, 
uh, appears to actually uh, meet his demise after Mark decided not to kill him at the end of episode six. Um, yeah. And he meets his demise by a mysterious uh, third personality, which again, they kind of alluded to at the end of episode six, where he has a, he, has he's, a he looks blackout. like he's about to lose. He has a blackout moment and there's a lot of death, <laughs> tons <laughs> of death around him. Um, and uh, yeah, so we get to see Jake Lockley, who I think uh, I'm not a, I got to not read the comics, but I know uh, that uh, just from beyond the internet, a lot of people that are comics fans have been wondering where this personality had been the whole time. And apparently he was there. Um, maybe. And, and now I'm wondering if he was there even earlier on in the series, like, and especially in the mm. first episode when he was having a lot of those blackouts, was that actually Mark or was that Jake Lockley? Um, which yeah. is the, the famous cab driver personality um, of, uh, yeah. of Mark Spector slash Steven. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that they revealed that, that is, and actually Conchu seems to have really have the deal with him and he was kind of manipulating Steven and Mark and he's really can more connected with Jake Lockley to do his bidding. And Jake Lockley seems like he's very happy to carry it out. <laughs> and Conchu suddenly after, after six episodes of seeming like he's the hero in the story, in that post credit sequence, he suddenly becomes a much more sinister force. Yeah. You know, yeah. so it almost seems like we get rid of Ethan Hawke's character, but the villain in season two, is it going to be Conchu himself? Like, I guess if, if I knew the Moon Knight comics, I might see more where they're going with this. Right. But for now, it was very intriguing where it seems like we, we killed this villain to set up a new villain, but this villain lives inside the head of our hero. You yeah, know, so it's like, yeah. How it is, is a lot of great story to, to tell out of that. It's yeah. very unique. Like, how is Mark going to fight Jake? Like, I'm just, yeah, I, I'm intrigued by how yeah. all that's going to play out. So. Um,